all right hey guys what's up this is wolf here one only how are my adventures doing welcome back to another dev vlog i apologize for the random lawn mowing i guess i can close my window for that it'll be a little bit hot in here okay <laughs> great, great 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 way to start out a video anywho yeah welcome back to another dev vlog this is dev vlog number 33 i believe but yeah, the new things that we have done is I fixed the bug where some Monster Girls wouldn't show up when they were tamed. Which, Game Dev helped out with that one. With uh, another video that came afterwards, which kind of threw me off a little bit. It was just like, uh, I didn't even know this was a bug. But, you know, lo and behold, the bug was definitely in my game. So, yeah, ended up fixing that. And... We're going to be making the flea from battle system as well. So that function is going to be available. And we also made it to where you cannot flee from to where you cannot flee from trainers. But in my case, it would be tamers. But I just have trainers in the code just to make it easier. So I don't confuse myself too much. Technically, there are still trainers, like I said. So making sure everything still works here and now we're testing it making sure that they show up inside of the coding with this new change so now they're actually showing up now that we made that now we're going into now we're going into coding the escape system to escape from trainers to where it has that same logic that um pokemon has the higher level of the current monster girl that is out the bigger chance you have of fleeing and also has to do with speed as well so the higher the speed the more success rate you're gonna have on escaping no no it wasn't level it was it was definitely speed so yeah speed is based on pretty much how how much chance you're gonna have to escape so if you have a higher base speed than the enemy, you have a guarantee escape from that wild monster girl. But the monster girl has a larger speed than you, you have a bigger chance of failing. But you don't have a guarantee, but you don't have like, hmm, let's say this. How do I explain it? You don't have like a 100% chance of getting locked into a battle if that monster girl is faster than you, but you have a 100% guarantee to escape if your speed is higher than the monster girl. So there's a chance to escape if they're higher speed than you. And there we go. That, that's the easiest way to explain that. So, perfect. I think that person just... Probably went into her backyard with that mower now. I, I don't hear it anymore. But yeah, there's escape attempts. And I think... That I was supposed to be coding it to where... The more times you try, the more... The higher the rate goes of escaping. Either that or we already did it with game devs help. If we didn't code it that way, I'm going to code it that way later. Because I have a lot of things I got to relook through. As I'm currently here, I, here looking at this, I think we did. To where the more times you try and escape, the larger the chance gets to escaping. So now we got to recall the action inside of our actual battle menu we're just copying and pasting using use item just because it's the same function so now we get to test it out I successfully ran away now I test this quite a few times test it with a different monster girl that has slower speed I was looking for Taiju inside of the wild forest just so I can see if, you know, the speed of it. 
because Saiju is the best person to, te to test this on. So she has a higher speed than everybody. Okay, so yeah, there it is. Escape. Our escape was blocked. We got to make sure that we can't escape from trainers. And that was perfect. So now in this one, we're fixing. This is something I uh, actually looked up myself. This is a part of the game devs uh, video. Uh, I always saw like the texture issue and it kind of annoyed me for a while because this is because you guys voted on a 3D world and a 2D sprite asset world. And the thing is, we're going to be doing that once we catch up with all of these uh, tutorials and understandings of our codes from a uh, game dev. Then we're going to go ahead and start doing our own things and start getting in some new changes and system reworks as I've been wanting to do. But I want to see everything he has to offer and see his way of coding and understand like how he does it. Because so far I'm understanding quite a bit from him and I'm also taking the time to learn like, you know, off of his like off somewhere else inside of separate videos. And I learned that there is a sprite, uh, sprite axis or alias, whichever one it was, we'll see in this video, but that fixes towels that have like little lines or gaps between them. You won't be able to see it during like the actual like unity. It's only when you start playing the actual game itself. So with that said, everything you're seeing here towards the world is basically, oh, it's Atlas. But yeah, everything you're seeing here is placeholder. I always tell you guys that. So what I did was put the axes in here. Then I had to type in my tile sets, the original tile sets, not the tile sets that I'm already using. The tile sets to go off this. And I didn't realize I was I was kept pressing it and I didn't understand it from what I was reading. I was thinking to myself, am I doing it wrong? And no, uh, I wasn't doing it wrong. It just didn't, it just doesn't show, always show like a loading system when I'm doing it. I was looking at the settings and everything. But, I went to go look at this, making sure I didn't screw anything up. And I was gonna put the rest of the tile sets in. So I figured out there's an easier way to do this. I keep forgetting it. I just it just kept saying like an error right there and I could put that in there through that. But I was supposed to hover over there. So now you guys see the talent sets are a lot less noticeable on lines. Which is thankfully great. Because you guys can notice it here. It's, it's very, very noticeable. And so we change everything and actually play it to where it's a lot less noticeable. The funny thing is, this was the main reason why I asked about 2D to 3D, because there was a lot of like little texture issues. And I was thinking to myself, am I going to have to have, um, you know, Taos? What was his name? Yeah, damn, it's been so long since I've talked to him. Yak. I'm, I think his name is Yak. <laughs> I have to talk to him again and see, if, well, them again and see if they're available to help me out. But as of right now, yeah, I'm not too sure on getting more assets like done from them yet. Or I might just hand my tile sets over to somebody who makes 3D models and have them use it like a concept. So I could get concepts from Yak over to somebody who makes 3D models and, you know, have it done that way. That could actually work. But, yeah, with that said, looks a lot better now from what it did. It's slightly noticeable, but a lot less noticeable. So now we're making the XP, <laughs> excuse me, the XP system to where Monster Girls bars are gonna show up to you know it's typically like pokemon's like xp bar you know it's gonna it's gonna basically go up you know to a certain amount of xp then it's just like boom level up but the level up section 
is after we figure out the whole XP bar situation. So we got to change all of our coding for um, defeated monster girls. So we're dragging down a code that was inside of a different code and we're going to have this handle the whole battling, well, the whole defeated monster girl situation. I've noticed that it's better to have like all of your major coatings down here separated from all your your simple stuff up here because you could change all of it from these functions and it actually makes it extremely easy off of that because these are just normal functions so where you can just control click and it'll take you down to that function and you can just change within that code which makes it easy see i'm learning i'm picking up stuff i may be stupid and you know kind of slow with this but you know i'm learning i'm picking up things <laughs> It's just going to be very confusing to figure out like every single last code and what I can and can't do. It's mostly the issue that I've suffered right now is figuring out what's coaling and what's like, what's going to be this, what times will I have to put like void, what times would I have to put public void, what times would I have to be putting private voids. That's the thing that I'm struggling with uh, understanding right now, but I'm figuring it out and <laughs> it is slow, but steady. There's sometimes to where you're going to have to put like public int and there's sometimes where you're just going to have to put um, game object as well, which I I'm starting to understand that a little bit more too. Which, after doing this, I have another game in mind that I can do. That could actually end up funding this game. But it will take quite a bit of time off of this game, which I don't want to do right now. I want to get this to a stable situation before I even think about doing like another game. And I think that other game could actually be a lot more successful than this would ever be. <laughs> For a first game, that is. <laughs> Alright, so now we gotta figure out our XP situation to where we can actually code in XP for, you know, the Monster Girls. So, I thought to myself, the growth rate thing is definitely very fun to poke around with and i'm actually happy he, he actually went over this because i was thinking about the growth rate systems considering i've played so many other like gotcha games that have that as well and it was one of my things on my list to try and do which like i said is great that he actually covered that too I, I didn't even know Pokemon even had growth rates. I, I don't think I ever paid attention to it at all with all the Pokemon games I played. Um, I've also been talking with friends as well. Been getting quite a lot of ideas from them. Well, more or less friends, more or less close co-workers, very close co-workers. Um, been getting their point of view since they played Pokemon before and I understand quite a bit and have a little bit of knowledge behind it like most people like I was thinking to myself maybe I should make it the game to where every last party member gets XP like the XP share party share but then I was told that that's kind of the reason why old players don't really like the newer Pokemon's because of that now I was thinking to myself, maybe there's a way I can kind of like come to like, you know, an understanding to where later on I will make like a toggle system to where you can toggle on, you know, XP share between the party or just the good old classic version of it. 
that would be down the road. I'm not, like, trying to get further into that right now. So once we're done with the basic part of the game, then we'll go into that. That would be the most simplest thing to do. Just makes sense that way. So now we're testing out the leveling system. Well, the XP bar system. But no, not the XP bar system. The XP uh, text telling us that we have X gained XP from that monster girl. How much we've gained. So now we're basically going to copy this and have this as the XP UI that's just going to go down here. I'm thinking about if I do get like another, you know, replacement for this HUD, I'm definitely going to have it in a similar fashion as this, but a lot more, you know, clean since this is a placeholder. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the HP system, the HP bars and everything. But a little bit of different function behind it. So we're going to make the background for it. And we're going to have that white. I do switch these around. I don't know what my brain was thinking when I was switching those around. But it, it made no significant change. <laughs> I was playing with this back and forth until, until I actually figured out what I was doing. <laughs> We're not going to talk about it. It, it was, it was odd, odd. Very awkward. So now we have this on top of this. And now we're testing it, making sure it's perfect. So now we got to do the whole HUD programming and everything, making sure that XP bar actually moves. Because this is what I was talking about earlier, though. It's like, there's those weird moments to where you see this and there's certain situations where you go for, you know, putting in HP bar, then HP. And there are certain other situations to where you're just putting in like game object instead. Which can be tedious to try and figure out like what functions you're going for. I think I went back too far. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's only funny because the game copy and pasted this. So, well, the virtual, virtual studio copied this and it was just like HP HP bar and I was just sitting here like oh okay I could have just spelled it actually HP bar and just had a shortcut for this to be honest this Visual Studio has like a lot of good presets it's just you just can't go about it just like tapping everything that it puts in because you also have to figure out what you want that to be towards that's that's also another issue when it comes to like coding you can't just be like oh okay the visual studio knows what it's doing better than i do and i'm just gonna follow what video what a uh, virtual studio wants me to do it's like it, you can't do that unfortunately because it, it doesn't like it doesn't fully know what you're trying to do with that code. That's the issue. Okay, so now we're just normalizing the XP. Now we also got to make sure we loop it as well later on 
but we're making sure it doesn't just instantly go. As soon as we get like that 91 XP, it just just instantly go. We want it to smoothly go up like Pokemon does, you know, give you that satisfaction of how much XP you actually earned instead of just like do 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 and just going through all the XP. Okay, so now that's in there. So now we gotta put that inside of our battle system. And now we can test how much XP we get it from this. And we got the XP for that. It, it was a little bit too fast for you guys, <laughs> considering I have it sped up. But yeah. <laughs> you guys will see it's still later. But yeah, that is the part for the XP bar actually getting to work. Now we're going on to the level up system, which was a lot easier to do. Now the level up system is going to be like very, very easy. That was actually the sort of the sh shortest section of doing this. Happy I finally got time to actually like work back on the game. I've been like extremely busy this whole week. Had to use a little bit of my off day for it. I'm supposed to be playing uh, more Elder Ring co-op with with Shadow and Alice, but, you know, kind of got caught up. <laughs> We're almost done. Anyway, made the level up system, copied it from the other, like, level up of your... Yeah, just basically moved it down. That's what, that's what I did. I made an actual section for it. And now it's going to follow the whole routing from here. So now it's actually going to level up and go up and stay that way. Because I'll show you guys inside of my um, side of my sidebar over here that the game, well, that Unity's actually processing the level up is not resetting it after each battle. It's actually permanently staying there. And since I'm not saving anything, Unity isn't saving anything when I redo it again. It's only saving it for when I'm actually just still playing. We don't have the saving system yet. <laughs> so now I'm putting in bigger XP just to make sure the looping actually goes through. Because if I didn't add in the looping, it would have just been like, okay, full XP bar. And it's not going to reset and just keep going up keep going up it was just gonna go there then just instantly go to that to that level i believe and we also made it to where trainers give multiple well more xp there we go but yeah trainers give more xp than um the wild monster girls. So their XP is basically multiplied. When you're fighting the trainer. We also made it based off level as well. So both level and. The monster girls base XP. Give come into play. So now. You guys saw that her default. Was like 300. No I think. It was either 300 or two or 250 or three. Okay. No, I set up one as 352 and another one that was 250. As you can see, it multiplied because it's a trainer that we're actually fighting. Now the XP is going up into those levels. And the game right here is also processing that those levels went up. So now she's level eight. 
but I obviously haven't implemented it to where XP goes up every time they level up. Not yet, at least. As you see, the stats are still the same. But HP stats are still the same. <laughs> and yes, I still know I have that text bug. I'll, I'll fix it down the road. It's not really important right now. Okay, so he was also talking about a bug to where your uh, where your sprite would sometimes initiate battles by just standing over them. But well, well, why not standing over them? It still causes it, but I'm gonna have to do like some adjustments to that because mine isn't the same as his. His was like eight. This was like zero point eight. Yeah, his was 0 0.8 right here. Mine is 0. 0 0.552. No, 52. 0 0.52. <laughs> My brain. But yeah, his was 0 0.8. So I honestly have to do something different with mine, obviously. So something I'm going to have to figure out on my own. With that said, that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed another devlog. I will see you guys more than likely next week to where I'll actually have the next thing which is more than likely the monster girls learning moves now as they're leveling up and I can replace them which I think is the next thing on game devs uh list but that's it and then peace out